Welcome to the second video for the second module on inequalities. We've learned about absolute value in the previous video. Now we're going to put absolute value into inequalities and see what happens when we work with it. Let's work through some examples. I have an inequality here with an absolute value. Absolute value of x minus 4 larger than 6. So with the absolute value, I'm going to work in two cases like I did with equality. So I have a case where the thing inside the absolute value is positive, including 0. And I have a case where the thing inside the absolute value is negative. Those are the two cases I always have to work with with absolute value. In the first case, if the thing inside the absolute value is positive, I can just drop it. So from here to here, I just drop the absolute value in the first case. Then I solve. I add 4 to both sides. I get a solution of x greater or equal 10. Now I'm going to check my solution fits my case. If I remember greater than 10, if I subtract 4, that number is still larger than 0. So yes, all of these numbers satisfy case 1. So this range is, is a range of reasonable solution. Let me look at case 2. I assume the thing inside the absolute value is negative. So I drop the absolute value, and I multiply the thing in the absolute value by negative 1. That's what I do in case 2. So from the original equation to case 2, multiply by negative 1. Then I can multiply both sides of this equation by negative 1, or this inequality by negative 1 again. Uh, that's going to cancel this off. It's going to give me negative 6. And since I've multiplied by a negative, I have to reverse the inequality. Anytime I multiply by a negative, I reverse the inequality. So that gives me x minus 4 less than negative 6. Then I can add 4. That preserves inequality, so that's fine. And I get a solution here of x less than negative 2. I go back and say, does this solution fit, fit my case? x less than negative 2. The case is x minus 4 is less than 0. If I have a number below negative 2 and subtract 4, that's even a larger negative number. It's certainly going to be less than 0. So this is also valid. Together, these two ranges give me the solution to the original inequality. And if I do some interpretation, hopefully this makes sense. Because this says the distance between some unknown x and the number 4. And so the inequality says what numbers have a distance to 4 that is at least 6, or strictly larger than 6, I should say. Well, if I think of 4, what numbers are 6 units away from 4? On the positive side, I get numbers 10 and above. That's these numbers here. On the negative side, I get numbers negative 2 and below. So that makes sense. I should get these two ranges for interpreting this inequality as things which are more than 6 units away from the number 4. For the rest of this video, I want to do a fairly complicated example to show you sort of how involved this can get and how to keep track of what's going on with these kind of examples. So let's look at this complicated inequality with an absolute value. Before I do cases, I want to sort of boil it down to the simplest form before I break it up into cases. So let me first subtract 9, which preserves the inequality, gets rid of the 9 here, 25 minus 9 is 16. Here I'm going to take square roots. Now when I talked about square roots with inequalities in the previous module, there were two cases. I get the case here, and I also get the case x squared minus 8 um, larger than negative 4. So those are the two cases that I get for taking the square root in an inequality. This case I've written here. This case I haven't written here because absolute value is always positive and greater than negative 4 is true for all positive numbers. So in this case, I don't actually need to include this case because this case is trivially and always true. Again, a little bit of subtlety working with cases. Sometimes if there's a situation, a, a thing that we need to add, but it's automatically true, then we can we can just proceed without it because we know it's gonna it's gonna work for all possible solutions. So this gives me one inequality to move forward with, and this is where I'm going to apply cases. So let's look at the first case. The first case, the thing inside the absolute value is greater or equal zero. I need to actually solve this inequality that describes the case before I even get back to the original equation. So this is the same as x squared greater or equal 8. And then according to the previous module, 
that says x is greater than root 8 or less than negative root 8. So those are the two ranges that my case applies in. Now I can take my original equation from before and drop the absolute value and try and solve. Because in the case 1, the thing is positive, I drop the absolute value. I add 8 to both sides. I get this. And then I square root both sides. And again, I get following the modules that we did previously with square roots and inequalities, I get two conditions that this means that x has to be less than negative 12 and greater than negative root 12. All right, so now I need to put together my case and my solution. So I need numbers that are larger than root 8 or less than negative root 8, but also less than root 12 and larger than negative root 12. And I'm going to draw a number line here to try and make this make sense. So there's a number line. So the case says that I have to be larger than root 8, so that's here, or less than negative root 8, so that's here. The solution says that I have to be less than root 12 and larger than negative root 12. So the solution says I have to be between these two things. So what satisfies the case in the solution is this range here and this range here. So we've got all these cases, we've got all these solutions, we've got all these inequalities working around. It's pretty tricky to keep track of all this stuff. It requires fairly careful care and detail to uh, attention to the details of what's going on. So sort of keep that somewhere in the back of your head and I'm going to move on to the next case. The next case, I assume the thing inside the absolute value is less than zero. That turns into these two restrictions according to the previous videos and the previous modules for inequalities part one. Um, I take my equation from before. I take the thing inside the absolute value and multiply it by negative one because I'm assuming that it is negative. And then I keep solving. Uh, I multiply both sides of the equation by negative one that reverses both sides of the inequality by negative one that reverses the inequality. I add eight to both sides of the equality, I get this. And again, working with the square roots and inequalities from the previous module, x squared greater than four turns into either x greater than two or x less than negative two. And again, I'm gonna draw a number line to try and keep track of what is going on here. So my case is things less than root 8 and things larger than negative root 8, so between these two ranges. And my that's my case. My solution is things larger than 2 or things less than negative root 2 or negative 2. So what satisfies both of those, this range and this range. So again, I get two ranges that come out of what satisfies my case and satisfies the solution that I'm dealing with. All right, so we have these ranges from case one. We have these ranges at the bottom from case two. Let's put it all together. So these were the ranges from case one. These were the ranges from case two. I can draw this all on a number line again. So the ranges that I had from case one were these ones. The ranges that I had from case two were those ones, and they overlap at negative eight. Um, so I put that together. I'm going to get this whole range and this whole range. So I put the two ranges from the two cases together, and I get the solution ranges to my original inequality are all numbers above negative root 12, and below or equal to negative root two, and above, or negative two rather, and above two and below or equal to negative root 12. As I say, that's a pretty complicated and involved example. That's not an example I expect you to be able to accomplish on your own as part of this review module, but it's more to give you an idea of how this works in a complicated example and to show you the kind of care and attention to detail required.